The electron transport chain happens on the inner mitochondrial membrane, so on the membrane itself. And this is the part where we're actually going to make ATP with the help of these electron carriers that we made during the Krebs cycle. So let's take a closer look at the inner mitochondrial membrane and see what happens during the electron transport chain. So here's a more close-up diagram of the inner mitochondrial membrane. Let's just orient ourselves. Let's say that over here is the outer membrane, which would make this area over here the cytoplasm of the cell. And let's say that over here is the matrix of the mitochondria. And here, just label it as the inner membrane. So you can see the inner membrane is studded with a bunch of these enzymes, and these are the enzymes that are involved in the electron transport chain. And in case you want to know the names of these various enzymes, they're over here. Some of them are pretty long, so we're just going to refer to them by numbers. This one over here is going to be 1, that's NADH reductase, then this white one, that's cytochrome Q, this green one is succinate dehydrogenase, then we have number 3, I'm not going to mention the names, you can read them if you want. Then we have cytochrome C over here, and then there's number 4 right over here. So we have NADH and FADH2, which were produced during the Krebs cycle, and these are our electron carriers. And I'm going to describe what happens to NADH, but the same thing happens to FADH2. So NADH is going to be oxidized or lose electrons. So let's write out that reaction. NADH will turn into NAD plus, plus two hydrogen ions, plus two electrons. So it got reduced. And those two electrons, I'm sorry, it got oxidized, it lost electrons. And those two electrons are going to go on to enzyme number one. So while NADH lost electrons and got oxidized, the first enzyme gained electrons or it got reduced. But enzyme one is not going to hold on to the electrons, it's going to pass them on to the next enzyme, which is cytochrome Q. So now enzyme number one gets oxidized because it loses electrons, but enzyme cytochrome Q gets reduced because it gains electrons. And then the same thing will happen with the next enzyme. Cytochrome Q will pass those two electrons on to the next enzyme. And in case you're wondering where this enzyme 2 comes in, so FADH2, when it gets oxidized, its electrons go directly to enzyme 2, from there to cytochrome Q, from there to 3, etc. But anyways, back to uh, what's happening to our NADH. So the two electrons are in enzyme 3, then they go to cytochrome C, then they go to enzyme 4, and then finally, those two electrons are used to reduce oxygen and make water. So I'm going to write one half O2, which is the same as one oxygen atom, plus two H pluses, plus those two electrons give us water. Two H pluses plus two electrons, that's the same thing as saying two H. So we produce water.